In this tutorial, we're going to define the shank segment in four different ways. How this segment is defined will affect the definition of the segment coordinate system. For the shank, the definition of the segment coordinate system will affect the internal-external rotation of this segment. Although we are just looking at the shank, the same principles will apply to other segments as well. During this tutorial, keep in mind the correct definition of a segment is dependent on the user's end goal. The first method we are going to use is using four targets to define the shank segment. We will use the lateral and medial knee markers to define the proximal end and the lateral and medial ankle markers to define the distal end. V3D will auto-populate the radius of the distal and proximal end. Since we will not be using this model to process data, we'll use the calibration targets for tracking. To define the segment coordinate system, V3D will follow four steps. First, Visual 3D will create an anatomical plane between the proximal and distal targets. In this instance, the knee and ankle targets are not on the same line and Visual 3D will use the least squares method to fit a plane between these targets. To better view the plane, we can switch the image of the shank from the TIB-FIB segment to, the actual, to an actual plane. The actual image has no bearing on the calculation, so we can modify it the model file and rotate scale the graphic model to whatever we like. Set the model file to cube and scale the width to 50 and de the depth to 1. We can see the plane lies in between the knee and ankle markers. Now that the plane is defined, the z-axis indicated by the blue axis, is defined along the distal the proximal end of the anatomical plane. Then the y-axis, indicated by the green, will be defined perpendicular to the z-axis and frontal plane. Finally, the x-axis, indicated by the red axes, will be defined by the z and y axes using the right-hand rule and will lie along the line of the plane. Now we're going to define the shank segment using three targets. First, we're going to create a virtual knee marker between the lateral and medial knee markers. The actual name of the virtual marker does not matter, but I'm going to use virtual knee joint center. We're going to create the knee center on the line between the lateral and medial targets. And to offset the virtual marker halfway between both targets. Apply and build the model and the target will appear in purple. Now we're going to create a second shank segment off the virtual knee joint center and the two ankle targets. For the proximal end of the segment, we'll set the radius to one half the distance between the lateral and medial knee targets. For the distal end of the segment, we'll define the lateral and medial definitions as the ankle targets. Select to use calibration targets for tracking, apply and build model. You can see there is now a new segment coordinate system that has been added. Notice that this new segment coordinate system is externally rotated compared to the original. This is because our frontal plane has been defined differently. By switching the graphic in the segment properties, we will be able to see the difference in the definition of the plane between our two segments. Once again, set the model graphic file to cube and set the scale width to 50 and the scale depth to 1. Apply and build your model. If we turn our skeleton on and zoom in on the shank segment, we are able to see the new plane that we created. Now we can see this anatomical plane is aligned with the lateral and medial ankle markers. And when compared to our first shank segment, the X and Y axes are externally rotated along the Z axis. For shank 3, we're going to use the same method as right shank 2, except we're going to use the ankle joint center instead of the knee joint center to define the anatomical plane. We'll use the lateral and medial knee markers to define the proximal end. We will define the virtual ankle joint center as halfway along the line between the medial and lateral ankle targets. Once again, our virtual landmark will appear in purple. We can now define our third shank segment. Use the medial and lateral knee targets to define the proximal end of the segment. Use our virtual 
angle joint center to define the distal end and use an equation to define the radius of the segment and use calibration targets for tracking. You can see the x-axis is now defined along the line between the two knee targets. Notice this axis is internally rotated compared to the original shank segment since the first segment was defined between both medial lateral ankle and knee targets. Now we're going to define a model using two targets to define the proximal and distal ends with one marker to define the orientation of the segment. We'll use our virtual knee and ankle joint centers to define the proximal and distal joint locations. We can use our equations to define the radius. To define the orientation of the segment, we're going to use RSK1 to define the lateral location of the segment. The plane is drawn between the proximal and distal ends of the segment, as well as the specified lateral target. I created hip and thigh segments so we could look at the effect these different segment coordinate systems have on the knee angle. If we move to signals and events, we can see the multiple coordinate systems in the 3D viewer. To look at the knee angle, I created four signals called RSK1 through 4. By going to model compute model base data, I created four knee angles with a reference system of the thigh and the segments being each of the different shanks. In the Reports tab, I graph the four shank segments in the X, Y, and Z. The Z depicts the internal external rotations. You can see that since my axes were rotated about the Z when I created my model, the internal external rotation of the shank segment was affected the most. 